but God did not leave us to our destruction. To save us from our sins, in fact, Jesus came to this earth and to blot out all our sins, he was baptized, shed his blood on the cross and rose from the dead again. The Lord has thereby become our true savior. We must believe in this truth. Do you believe? By any chance, are you not saying out of your ignorance and lack of biblical knowledge, what's the big deal? If we believe in Jesus somehow, then will we still go to heaven? And there are those who say, if we believe just in the blood of the cross, then heaven is ours. But is this kind of faith really right? God is, in fact, the God of truth. He is the one who spoke to us about his plan, who fulfilled the works of salvation exactly according to his word, who has given us the remission of sin, and who meets us through this truth. God is alive. God is here even now with each and every one of us. People who have sin in their hearts should not try to deceive God. If people have sin in their hearts and their conscience are eating them away, then they must get this problem solved by believing in the baptism that he received and the blood that he shed. The sinful must believe in the truth that because they were bound to hell, the Lord has saved them from all their sins through his baptism and his blood on the cross. There is absolutely no one who is unable to solve the problem of their sins by believing in the water and the blood. But even as our Lord has saved us through the water, the blood, and the spirit, 1 John 5th chapter, verses 6 through 8, if on our side we do not recognize and believe in this fact and therefore are destroyed, then we are entirely responsible for this outcome. All of us must confess before God. I am bound to hell, for I am sinful. But I believe in the gospel of the water, the blood, and the spirit. We must have such faith. We must believe in our hearts that the Lord has saved us from all our sins through the water, the blood, and the spirit. With our sincere hearts and faith, we must unite ourselves with the truth manifested in the gospel of the water and the spirit. Only then can we be saved from all our sins. As such, we must understand all these things and we must believe in their truth. Without even knowing the truth that is manifested in the tabernacle and the gospel of the water and the spirit, some people believe, because I believe I am going to heaven even as I still have sin. But God said that all who have sin will be cast into hell. He did not say that they will not be cast into hell even as they have sin just because they believe in Jesus. This is akin to becoming the greatest fool of all saying that they would go to heaven just because they believe in Jesus, when in fact they believe in whatever way they like is the reflection of a foolish, ignorant, and completely blind faith. Some others say, I haven't seen a single person who was cast into hell, nor have I seen anyone who entered heaven. We won't find out until the day of judgment. But there actually are heaven and hell. 
are there in this world only the things we can see with our eyes? Can you see the air with your eyes? There surely is also the realm of the unseen. All sinners who do not believe in God because they cannot see him are like the beast that perish. As such, people must realize that if they have sin in their hearts, they will be destroyed and they must therefore believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit and escape from the judgment of God. The wise are those who, even if they have not done many wrongs toward people around them, nevertheless recognize that they have done many wrongs against God and therefore admit that they will surely be judged when they soon stand before him. We should not perish on account of our ignorance and disregard of God and his just judgment. He will surely condemn each and every sinner with the everlasting fire of hell. If people are destroyed for not believing in the truth manifested in the tabernacle, even as they have heard it, then they must be Satan's children. What the Messiah wants from us is for us all to have the faith that enables us to receive the remission of sin and enter the kingdom of heaven. God did not make us as toys. When God made us the human beings, his purpose was to enable us to live without being tormented by sin but forever enjoying eternal life, splendor, and glory with God as his own children. To not to send us to hell, the Messiah was baptized, took upon the sins of the world, shed his blood on the cross, and has thereby blotted out all our sins. When God has loved us this much, if we do not acknowledge this love, but only half-heartedly believe in the salvation that he has given us, then we all will surely not escape from God's wrath. God has delivered us from our sins by sacrificing his own son. It is because the Messiah was baptized to bear all our sins onto his own body and gave himself up as the sacrifice of our sin offering that he has actually saved us from all the sins of the world. It is because we were bound to hell for our sins that our Lord had mercy on us. And it is because of this that he was baptized, bled to death, rose from the dead, and has thereby saved us from all our sins and made us God's children. God did not make us as his toys. A while ago, when a sister of my church was in college, I had a chance to attend her graduation exhibition. There, in this art gallery, I came across various paintings. One of the works painted by the graduating class was a canvas portraying Adam and Eve eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil entitled, Did God Make Human Beings as Toys? Someone scribbled an answer to this question below the canvas saying, God was bored, so he made us as his toys. Nothing could be more wrong than this answer. Why then did God make the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and tell Adam and Eve not to eat from it? After all, he knew already that they were going to eat the fruits, and yet he still made the tree and told them not to eat from it. When they did eat, 
he then drove them out of the Garden of Eden for falling into sin. He then said that the sinful will be sent straight to hell. Why did God do this? Did God really make us because he had no toy and was bored? Did he make mankind because he was just too bored and couldn't stand it anymore? Of course not. Brothers and sisters, what God actually wanted to do was to turn us into his own people, to make us immortal and to live with us happily forever. God's providence in permitting all these things to mankind was to make us immortal beings who enjoy everlasting splendor and glory who live forever glorified. Thus, when you and I, deceived by Satan, had fallen into sin and were destined to hell, God sent his only begotten son to save this earth to save us. And by having the Son be baptized and take upon the sins of the world, he shed his blood and rise from the dead again. God has saved us from Satan. However, countless people have this grotesque misperception that God somehow made us as toys to beat his boredom. Among those who ceased to believe in Jesus and those who never believed in him from the beginning, there are those who, in their bitterness to God, say, Why did God create me and then make me suffer? Why does he insist that I have to believe? Why does he say that he will give me salvation if I believe, but not if I don't? They say such things because they do not know the profound providence of salvation that God has given to mankind. This profound providence of the Messiah was to accept us as God's people and thereby make us his own children, allowing us to enjoy all the glory and splendor of heaven as his family. This is the purpose of God's creation of mankind. I myself also could not understand this truth until I was born again of the water and the spirit. But after I received the remission of sin and was born again, I came to know, ah, so this is why the Lord made me. What is it that the Messiah actually did to take upon our sins when he came to this earth over 2,000 years ago? What is it that he did to bear our sins? He received baptism and shed his blood. And these were all righteous acts and righteous sacrifices meant to blot out our sins. Herein lies the reason why we must actually believe in God and why we must believe in Jesus Christ as our God, the Savior. It is because you and I had been bound to hell that God himself had to actually come to this earth to save us. In other words, Jesus had to be baptized by John had to die on the cross, and had to rise from the dead again. The reason why we actually believe in the remission of sin revealed in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread is so that we can be remitted of all our sins. It is to fulfill the providence of God toward us that we must have faith. And when we do believe in the Lord's salvation, we do so not for the benefit of someone else, but for our own benefit. Now is the earliest time to
to believe in the truth of God's salvation. If anyone wants to reach the following realization, then this person must cast aside his or her mistaken faith right now and believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit in the heart. I didn't know that I was bound to hell. I just believed because I was told that Jesus blotted out my sins. But my faith was all based on faulty understanding. I should now learn what is correct and base my faith on sound knowledge. Up to now, I have believed wrongly, but it's not too late. All that I have to do is realize from now on that I am destined to hell for my sins, believe in my heart that the Messiah has saved me through his baptism and bloodshed, and then receive the remission of my sins. So I was bound to hell. As a matter of fact, only a handful of Christians had the proper and exact understanding of the gospel of the water and the spirit when they first began believing. For myself, too, it actually took 10 years since I first became a Christian to fully realize that Jesus took upon the sins of the world with his baptism and was crucified to death on the cross and only then was I really saved by believing again in Jesus as my own Savior. And so, 10 years after becoming a Christian, I threw out my mistaken faith and came to the proper understanding of the gospel of the water and the Spirit and believe in it correctly. But for others, perhaps, it might even take more than 20 years to know the truth and believe again. When such people come to realize, even after 20 years, that God had planned to save them through the water and the Spirit, they must then believe that Jesus was baptized and crucified for their sins. Nothing could be more evil before God than knowing the truth and yet refusing to believe. But if they were to believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit now, even after having lived 10, 20 years as Christians, is this somehow bad? Of course not. There is absolutely nothing wrong or shameful about this. When people actually know and believe in the remission of sin manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, then they will actually be saved. Faith in the gospel of the water and the spirit is what pleases God. I hope that you would all believe in this salvation that has actually been achieved, whose fulfillment came through the blue and scarlet thread. The coverings of the tabernacle were made in elaborate detail. Just by looking at the fact that ram skins dyed red were placed on the covering made of goat's hair and that badger skins were then laid on top of this, we can see the clear manifestation of the truth that we are all bound to hell. But our Lord came to this earth actually took upon our sins by being baptized and became the sacrificial offering for these sins of ours by shedding his blood and dying on the cross. We can all believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. What the Lord has actually saved us through is the works of Jesus manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. The coverings of the tabernacles hold none other than this mystery of salvation. What is important is not just learning about the Bible. What pleases God is to not only to learn, but to believe. 
That is, if the Bible tells us that God determined to save us through the works of Jesus revealed in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, then you and I must actually accept this into our hearts and believe so. This is how we can please God. If in our hearts we actually hear the word of God, recognize our own sins, and believe in the baptism of the Lord and the blood of the cross, then we can also actually receive the remission of our sins. But if we do not believe in the remission of sin given by the Lord and instead believe in him only as a theoretical matter, then we will continue to be tormented by a guilty conscience. If we do not solve the problem of our actual sins by believing in the water and the spirit, then this guilty conscience will continue to eat away at our hearts. However, if we believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, then we will be freed this guilty conscience. For when we become sinless by receiving the perfect remission of sin, how could we ever be tormented again? This is how we must actually believe. We must believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit and have the problem of all our sins solved. Those who fail to do so have no choice but to continue in the bondage of sin. Life is very short and full of suffering. God allows suffering to every human being. What is the reason God allows us to suffer? It is because through our suffering of sin, he wants us to realize the preciousness of the gospel of the water and the spirit, to believe in this gospel, and to thereby be actually absolved of our sins. He brought the suffering of sin to you so that you would come to believe in your hearts that the Messiah has washed away all your sins through his baptism and the blood of the cross. Not believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit as the truth is the most foolish thing to do. The sins of mankind can be wiped out clean only by the faith that actually believes in the gospel of the water and the spirit. God is telling us to solve the problem of our sins by believing in the true gospel. We must therefore believe in Jesus, the real savior. You too must actually believe in Jesus Christ as your own savior in your hearts. You must admit your sins before God, believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, and thereby be saved. When in your hearts you believe in the baptism of Jesus, the Savior, and his blood of the cross, then you will actually be remitted of all your sins. Only when we believe in the gospel of Jesus and the blood of the cross as the truth can we be saved from all our sins? The order of the coverings coincide exactly with the order of our salvation. When it comes to the order of our salvation, the priority is to first recognize truthfully that from the very moment we were born into this world, we have all been sinful like badgers, the beasts that perish. And we must believe that we surely are to be put to death and cast into hell for our sins. Furthermore, we must also believe that to be delivered from our sins, we actually need a sacrificial offering. And as such, the Messiah has to actually come and bear our sins by being baptized.
We must believe that our Savior must be not a human being, but God himself. And we must believe that Jesus the Savior has indeed saved us from all our sins through his baptism and the cross. If this were not the case, then God would have made only two coverings over the tabernacle. If salvation could be reached by leaving out Jesus' baptism, then there would have been no need to make four separate coverings of the tabernacle, and God would have covered it with only badger skins and ram skins. But were there only two coverings actually used? No. The tabernacle had to be covered by four different coverings. The curtains woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. Another curtain made of goat's hair. Yet another covering made of ram skins. And the last one made of badger skins. We must believe in the truth as it is. That is, Jesus accepted all our sins by being baptized, died on the cross, and has thereby saved our filthy and pitiful souls bound to hell for our sins, making us God's own people. This is the mystery hidden in the four coverings of the tabernacle and the order in which these four coverings were laid on the tabernacle is none other than the very order of our salvation. To couple the first and second coverings of the tabernacle together, gold and bronze clasp were needed. And at the edge of the two sets of curtains that together made up each covering, loops of blue yarn were made. But for those who believe only in the blood of the cross, it is impossible to know what these gold and bronze clasp attached on the loops of the blue yarn actually mean. Only those who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit can understand and believe in the truth hidden in the four coverings. The loops of blue yarn refer to the baptism that Jesus received in the Jordan River. Why then do people not believe in the baptism through which Jesus accepted the sins of the world, but believe only in the blood of the cross? It is because they do not believe in God's word as it is. When we profess to believe in Jesus, we cannot believe in him correctly by adding to or subtracting from the word of God. We must believe in God's word exactly as it is, with a yes. Among the many people who claim to believe in Jesus, most of them believe only in the blood that he shed on the cross leaving out the baptism that he received. This is why so many Christians cannot understand the mystery of the truth manifested in the coverings of the tabernacle. And this is why today's Christians do not believe in the real remission of sin that the Messiah has perfectly fulfilled. They believe in Jesus all in vain, just as one of the founders of the religions of the world. As such, many Christians are in fact walking on the wrong path. They sin every day and yet claim that they can go to heaven just by repenting every day. This explains why the secular people of the world so often denounce Christians. When we ask Christians, how and what kind of faith can you really solve the problem of your sins? Then most of them say, we can solve it by offering prayers of repentance while believing in Jesus' bloodshed on the cross. 
When we then ask them, have your sins then actually been solved away in your heart? They reply, actually, I still have sin left in my heart. People who have sin in their hearts are still not the people of God. Such people are outside Jesus Christ. They must come into Jesus Christ by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit soon. We must know in detail with what exact method our Lord has blotted out all our sins as it really is. It is by carrying the sins of the world to the cross through the baptism that he actually received from John and shedding his blood that the Lord has indeed blotted out all your sins. If we want to enter into God's presence, then we must enter by believing in our salvation woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread. No matter how devotedly one might actually have believed in God, it is still possible for him or her to have misunderstood and misbelieved the whole time. For us to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we must accept salvation made of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread through which the Messiah has actually blotted out our sins as the truth and believe in it. If our faith before God is wrong, then we must fix it and believe again correctly, no matter how often. We must believe in salvation, that the Lord actually took upon our sins and washed them all away through his baptism as the truth. We must actually believe that the Lord took upon all our sins once for all with his baptism and that he bore all the condemnation of our sins through the blood of the cross. With the real faith in the ministries of Jesus manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread of the temple, we can meet the Messiah. Through the tabernacle, we have now been able to grasp the gospel of the water and the spirit more definitely and to realize that its faith is founded on the truth manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen. The faith of critical importance that we must all now have is the one that actually believes in the heart in salvation made of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. We are now hearing and learning about the truth that is held in the tabernacle made of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. The Messiah is waiting for us now having actually remitted all our sins already through his works manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. God is admonishing you to believe this truth with all your hearts. Do you still have sin in your hearts? Then you must all clearly recognize before God just how dark and filthy the sins in your hearts are. Confess your sins. Believe in the truth revealed in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and thereby receive the remission of all your sins. When you truly believe that Jesus has already remitted all your sins, you can then pass all the sins found in your hearts onto him and receive his perfect remission of sin. We must all believe in our hearts in the remission of sin made of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen that God has actually planned for us. God has given us the gospel made of these marvelous ministries of Jesus, of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, 
and has thereby enabled us to receive the remission of sin and enjoy all power and authority as his own children. The Lord has enabled us to be saved from all our sins and condemnation and to receive eternal life by believing in the works of salvation given to us and manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. I thank the Lord for making it possible for us to be saved by believing in the truth manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. By believing in this truth, we can be remitted of all our sins and enter the kingdom of heaven by faith. Hallelujah!